Good Erev Shabbos, and thank you so much for joining me. As we all know, this Shabbos, we have the privilege of starting to read the Torah all over again, from the beginning of Sefer Bereshus, which of course describes the creation of the world. Now, when we think about creation, the creation of the world, we think about the world in which we live today. But actually, our rabbis in the Medrash tell us that the world in which we live today is not the first world that had ever existed. Believe it or not, there were other worlds. Worlds which the Medrash describes as being better, greater than the world in which we live today. But God decided to destroy, to eliminate those worlds. And the world in which we live today is the one that ultimately endured. And the question is, why would HaKadosh Baruch Hu choose to create worlds only to destroy them? To bring about the world in which we live today? Obviously, when it comes to human creators, so there is a concept of trial and error. It takes several times before you get it right. However, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who is the perfect creator, the creator par excellence, the one who can make no errors. So then what does it mean that there were worlds that were created that were destroyed? And it took several attempts, so to speak, until we could create an, a world in which HaKadosh Baruch Hu was able to look and to say, V'hine tov ma'od, this world is indeed very good. So Rav Salavechik, in a yard site share that he gave in January 1957, gave a most amazing and insightful answer to this question. And he says that this medrash is conveying a very, very important and powerful message to us. And that is that a person has to know how important it is in life to continue to build and create even after his previous, previous efforts have failed and have been demolished. A person cannot lose hope. And a person cannot give up. A person has to rather build again. And even though sometimes in life, whatever it is that I am building, whatever it is that I'm trying to create, whatever it is that I am working on, is not necessarily as good as it was in the past, nevertheless, I have to look at the situation and say, V'hinei tov ma'od. It's not only good, it's very good. And it's going to be great. I'm going to make the best of it. The Rav said at the time, that today we have to judge the Torah world that we are reconstructing after the Holocaust as being very good. And he reflects upon the fact that he is very proud of the accomplishments of the Maimonides Day School in Boston, which he helped found. And he says that sometimes I test the students in Chumash and Rashi, and I'm very, very inspired by their achievements. And then I ask myself, why am I so excited about their accomplishments? After all, I saw the great giants of European Torah Jewry I discussed Talmudic topics with my grandfather, Reb Chaim Salavechik. I had the opportunity to engage in long debates and discussions with Reb Chaim Ozer Grzynski to discuss Shailas and the Rambam with Reb Baruch Ber and Reb Shimon Shkup. I saw a world that was so much greater than this. And so why am I so impressed, asked the Rub, that American youngsters can master a little Chumash and Rashi, the rudiments of Torah study. And he said that this is the message of the recreation of destroyed worlds. A Jew has to know how to emulate God, the mitzvah of a halach to bedrachim, and like God, to continue to create even after his former world has been eradicated. True, he says, what I have in Boston may not be as beautiful as the European Torah world before the Holocaust. Nevertheless, it is the world in which we now have, and we have to continue to build it and not look back. What an inspiring thought from Rav Soloveitchik, and something which I think really could be, when, when we think about it, can be applied to the entire Torah, if you think about it, Sefer Bereshis is a story uh, or a book of many, many stories which over and over and over and over again describe to us what appears to be failed attempts. When you think about a Gan Eden, Gan Eden, which of course was a state of perfection as far as we can tell, was an experiment that didn't last all that long. According to the, to, to the Medrash, Chazal tell us, it was really only a couple of hours before Adam and Chava had failed to meet the expectations of the Rabbonu Shalom and had sinned. And of course, we know after the banishment from Gan Eden, that problems continued to exist within their family, ultimately in future generations with the Dor, Dor HaMabel, the generation of the Flood, the Dor HaFlaga. And even when we come to Avram Avinu, you would think that, okay, now we have arrived at a time in history and when things are going to be perfect, but we know that things were not perfect within Avram Avinu's family. With Yishmael and Yitzchak, a very complicated situation. Yitzchak has Yaakov and Esav. And while Yaakov has the Shvatim, Mitaso Shlema, we know that there was a lot of strife within that family. Yosef and his brothers don't quite get along. And again and again and again, the Torah tells us, story after story after story, how whatever plan A was, 
it doesn't always materialize. The way that things were supposed to be are not, in fact, always what happens. And again and again and again, people have to learn how to adjust, how to respond, and how to make the best of a situation which is not ideal, which is not really what I had imagined, what, not what I had created, not what I had desired, not what I put so much effort into being able to do. And I believe that this theme, if we think about it, continues throughout the entire Torah. There is hardly a story, there's hardly an event that happens in which there are not constant, uh, there's not a constant need to sort of adjust and to revise and to adapt and to respond to situations which don't go as planned. And if you think about it, this continues through the entire Torah, literally until the last words. We actually just read a few days ago, on the day of Simchas Torah, we read at the conclusion of the Torah, in the, Zosabrach, the last day Psukim very dramatically described the death of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe is described as being obviously a very unique individual. There was never another prophet that lived like Moshe. And the Torah tells us how he was able to lead and to facilitate so many incredible moments in our history. Ulechol Hayara Chazaka says the Torah, the last Pasuk in the Torah. Ulechol Amora Hagado says Rashi, he accepted the Torah and he delivered, he was able to facilitate Nisim, Gruos, Shebe Midbar. And then Asher Osa Moshe Le'ene Kol Yisrael. Le'ene Kol Yisrael. Before the eyes of the people. Rashi says, what does that mean? Shenasa Libo Lishbar Haluchos Le'ene. That Moshe make the decision to break the Luchos before the Jewish people, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu was maskim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu agreed with this decision, as Chazal tell us, Asher Shibarto Yashkoach Asher Shibarto, HaKadosh Baruch Hu agreed, so to speak, with Moshe's, Moshe's decision to break the Luchos. When you think about this, it's such a strange way to end the Torah. Over here, the Torah is building up to such a high, such a powerful, dramatic moment, a climactic moment, and the Torah's concluding words, Le'ene Ko Yisrael, and Rashi's concluding words are basically reminding us of such a devastating, disappointing moment in our history, the moment of Shri Saluchos, which of course goes down in history as being a great tragedy. We mourn for the Shri Saluchos on the day of Shavasa Batamus. But the beginning of the Torah is about failed attempts. It's about making the best of a situation, even when things don't go as planned. And the end of the Torah continues that very conversation, because really that is part of life. It doesn't end after the destruction of the Luchos. Moshe gets up, and he ascends Har Sinai another time, and the process continues. It's true, there's a debate as to whether or not the second Luchos were inferior or superior compared to the first Luchos, but the idea is, this wasn't plan A, but we adjust, and we find ourselves in a new place, and we make the best of this situation. This is such an important life lesson. I've commented in the past, you know, there are a lot of very interesting life lessons that we can learn from a GPS. But I think one of the most important ones is the way the GPS is able in really a fraction of a second to recalculate that when a person drives off course and decides either intentionally or unintentionally, you know, makes a wrong turn or gets off the wrong exit, so suddenly the GPS recalculates. Now it used to be several years ago, before the processing speed of GPSs were as fast as they are today, you actually saw as it would say, hold on a second, recalculating. It would take two, five, maybe 10 seconds. Today it happens so quickly, you don't even get to appreciate that process. But could you imagine if we as human beings were able to recalculate? We are able, but we have to make a choice to do so. Things don't go as planned. Sometimes things happen. I get derailed. Um, there's a detour. There's a setback. There's some disappointment and things are not as good as they were, things are not the way they were supposed to be, this is not what I worked for, this is not what I planned for, so what's my reaction? My reaction should be to recalculate. And by doing so, says the Rav, I am fulfilling the mitzvah daraisa of a halach de bedrachav. I am emulating the way of God himself. The Kaddish, Kaddish Baruch Hu, the perfect creator, created, created worlds that were bigger and better than the world in which we live today, but they were eliminated in order to make way for the world in which we live today. A world which is not perfect. A world in which things don't always go as planned. A world in which sometimes plan A doesn't materialize, and so therefore I need to adapt to plan B. And in the course of doing so, I discovered that plan B is also not going to turn out the way I wanted, and so therefore I have to further 
adapt to recalculate to make way for plan C, etc. This is the world in which we live. It may seem imperfect, but the reality is that it is so by design. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to be able to learn how to become the kind of people who can accommodate, who can adapt, who can react in a responsible, in a measured and a thoughtful way to life's disappointments. And by doing so, ironically and strangely, we actually make ourselves better people. By reacting to the life, to the imperfections of life, we slowly but surely work our way closer to perfection. We can never truly become perfect, but we move slowly but surely in that direction by responding to life's imperfections, to responding to the things that don't go as planned, by learning to recalculate, by learning to adjust, by learning to make the best of the situation in which we find ourselves. And to sit and say, this is not the way it was supposed to be, or this is not as good as it once was, this isn't the world that my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents lived in, it's flawed, there are so many problems. To live in that place, to get stuck in that perspective, we do ourselves a great disservice. Rather, we should follow the lead of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who led by example and Sefer Bereshis from beginning to end. Story after story, we see individuals who were able to follow that lead, who said, this isn't the way I had imagined it, this isn't what I wanted, this isn't the way I had planned it, but this is where I find, my, find myself, and I'm going to make the best of it. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful Shabbos.